Please welcome Dr. Daniel Nagasi. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's wonderful to see so many people out today. So, um, I'd like to go over something today. It's about the difference between legal and right. And this was something I started thinking about recently because a, 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 a week and a half ago, I was on a Zoom call with a senator from Wisconsin, Senator Ron Johnson. And I said to him, I found a sample of Pfizer and Moderna in British Columbia that had no traces of mRNA. But what I did see under the electron microscope were complex carbon structures, things that looked like carbon nanotubes or spheres, and things that looked like chips, but they were just made, made out of carbon and oxygen. So it's not like silicon chips that are in any of your phones. So this is a technology, this is a substance using carbon and oxygen that could be graphene, could be graphene oxide, but I don't have access to the advanced equipment to figure out what it is. So I said to the senator, I said, Senator, you're a senator. Could you give me access to a state lab or a state university lab? Because they will have the equipment I need to figure out what exactly it is that I'm looking at. Because it's not mRNA and it's not any form of carbon that I know of. And he said to me, Daniel, you're not allowed to reverse engineer the vaccines. That would be illegal. That would be violating proprietary trade secrets. I'm still going to do it anyway. But I want everyone to start thinking about the difference between right and legal. Because we're all going to be faced with some very hard decisions soon. Whether we do what's right or we do what's legal. Because they aren't always the same. In fact, there's a lot of things that are legal that are wrong. And it takes a lot of courage to stand up and do something that's illegal because it's right. I've had contact with some very strong freedom fighters in the past week. People who are literally ready to fight and lay down their lives for freedom to do what's right. And some members of the freedom community have been afraid of these fighters because they're ex-RCMP and ex-military and they're ready to die for what's right so that we can have freedom. And w the message I want to send out to those members of the freedom community who are afraid that, that these, these freedom fighters might get us all into trouble, have no fear. They are on the right side of society. Every time there's tyranny, there comes a point where you, each and every one of us, have to be ready to stand up and fight for our freedoms. And sometimes, having the credible strength, tactics, and power to defend yourselves, that prevents violence. Because if they know you're going to defeat them, they won't attack you. But what we saw in Ottawa were some very, very brave people stand up and they got beaten by the police. They had their property vandalized by the police. We learned the lesson, we got that message. So I want to show my support and the members of the freedom community know who I'm talking about. I want everyone to know that this time around, we saw what happened in Ottawa. We're not going to let that happen again. Now, that does not mean that we have to be violent or use threats of violence. In fact, I think the best thing we can do is every weekend that it's hot and sunny, let's have a water fight 
tug of war, capture the flag of party in every park, in every city across Canada. Let's have a good time this summer. Let's show the world what freedom feels like. Having a good time in the park. Having a festival. And not an organized festival. Just people come to the park, bring your skip ropes, bring your water guns. Let's have a good time. Because a lot of people who haven't woken up to what's happened around, around them yet, they're getting COVID fatigue. They know something's wrong, but they don't want to hear about the corruption. They don't want to do anything about the corruption. They just want to ignore, they want to get back to their whatever life they had previously, even though that they know in their hearts something's wrong. And to win over people, we need to we need to show them, not just tell them like I'm telling you right now. We need to show people what freedom feels like. It's having a party in the park without any masks, without any fear, shaking the hand of a stranger, hugging a stranger, playing games with a stranger, and making new friends. Because if we can make everyone into an ally, we can turn enemies into friends, then we can win this without firing a single shot. Thank you, Daniel.